What's up everyone, excited to give you this video today about plug power. So what I'll cover today is recent news. I will cover the chart, give a price prediction for the stock, then I will cover short interest, and I'll also go over the company's fundamentals, dive into their financials, and see if this company is overvalued or undervalued relative to, to its peers. But with that being said, I will also make this a disclaimer. This is not financial advice, so please do your own research in D&D, but the recent news that we've seen in the EV charging space is really everyone's moving towards Tesla charging. So we saw Texas require EV charging stations um, in, in its state. We're also seeing the state of Washington plans to require EV charging companies to incorporate Tesla charging plugs into their stations. So Ford, obviously, moving towards Tesla charging. So this seems like a trend that's really just starting, and, and it really is because Tesla charger, chargers are more prevalent throughout the United States than any other charger. So it just makes so much sense for EV adoption to move towards Tesla charging. So this is really the, the biggest risk for plug power, and I'll cover it first because it's kind of recent news, and it's really just been happening over the past couple of couple weeks to months. So if, if you're a shareholder, I do think it makes sense to be somewhat aware of that. But with that being said, let's take a look at the chart and try to give a price prediction based on technical. So first off, I think we, we need to put in perspective that this stock IPO'd at 150 bucks about and rose to about $1,500 in the early 2000s. So that kind of shows you how far um, plug has fallen, and it, it fu fundamentally right like all these technologies weren't as popular back then as they are right now. So it's kind of it kind of doesn't make so much sense. But obviously, more players moving into the space has been hurting the company. But when we look at the technical, so the stock had rejected the 100-day moving average back in mid-June, and it's now coming down to test the 50-day moving average at about 9 bucks. So this 50-day moving average could act as support for the company over the coming days. Um, and then really the next major level of support, and, and I do think from a technical standpoint, this is a pretty good buy zone, is at about $7.50. This is where shares had bottomed out in May, and it's also where shares had bottomed out in August of 2022, or excuse me, August of 2020. So given that, I, I believe this level here is a pretty significant level of support, and if we come down to, to test this level, I think it's a pretty good buying zone. Um, shares, um, you know, definitely have are under um, some bearish momentum pressures right now, and that's because the fifth day moving average crossed below the two hundred day moving average in November, and that is known as a death cross and implies bearish momentum, and we've gotten a pretty significant move lower over the coming months after that death cross. Got one back in February of twenty twenty two, had a pretty significant move lower over the coming weeks. So, um, you know, this definitely hasn't been a predictor of uh, positive stock price. It's been a predictor of the stock mo moving lower in, in, in the past, in the past two instances, instances to be specific. But with that being said, I think, you know, this $7 um, buy zone, $7.50 is a pretty good spot to, to get some plugs. So it's my, my official price prediction that we likely continue to move lower down to support. And then once we get down to 750, we likely stabilize and move higher. So that is my price prediction. And then in terms of what the stock has typically typically uh, does in every month. So I always like to look at these seasonality trends. So this shows me um, which months the stock typically does good in, which month the stock typically does bad in. So June or June is basically a net um, even month, and then July is a bearish month. So we're falling below all daily moving averages. We, um, you know, technicals don't look good. I do think we likely continue down lower to about seven dollars and fifty cents, especially since you know we have bearish seasonality trends here um, in July as, as shares typically drop seven point eight percent. And it's interesting here to see that January is the best month for the stock. And 
I would really say that that's because um, most losers from the prior year always get bought in January because they're being sold at the end of the year for tax purposes. So, so this is a very common dynamic for stocks that that are that have lost a lot of value is that they do very well in January because once everyone kind of oversells their losers in November and December for tax purposes, and then they buy back once it, it doesn't make tax sense to sell anymore, right? So January, it's, this is, <laughs> this definitely is, um, is a com is a common theme in stocks that have lost a lot of value. Um, it it j- just shows that there's been a lot of tax loss selling on the stock. And when you consider that it, that it came from highs of 1500 bucks and an IPO at 150 bucks, it's been, you know, pr- pretty much in a downward spiral for, for, you know, it's 23 year history. So, um, not shocking there. And then let's take a peek at short interest. So short interest is 22% of the float and we have five days to cover. And for those that don't know, five days to cover basically means that it takes 5.3 days of average volume to cover the outstanding shorts. So t- that is a, a decently high rating. Typically, in t- when, when we look at this rating, we look for a rating of 10 for days to cover to explain or to you know show that there is a possible short squeeze on the horizon so definitely not short squeezed territory yet but it definitely is um it's definitely on its way there although it's not a short squeeze um you know level yet with that being said i will jump into the fundamentals of the company so this is seeking alpha here all these grades are put relative to their peers so for example, valuation um, is seeking alpha is giving them a C minus relative to their peers, growth, profitability, mo- momentum. All these grades are relative to his peer to to the stock's peers. So I, I really like this tool. It's definitely a good one for breaking down stocks. So obviously the company doesn't make money. Um, EV to sales is six times relative, to, which is compared to the sector median of one point seven. But what looks really, really, really good here, and, and I really want to stress this is price to book value is at 1.39 and that basically means that the assets on its balance sheet um, are pretty high relative to, to its market cap it to to put it in exact terms it basically means that the market cap is 1.39 times the value of the assets on its balance sheet so only 39 percent higher than that than the vat than the excuse me, than the assets on, on its balance sheet. And those assets could be equipment, property. So they're very firm things, right? Um, so, so that's very good to see. Um, you know, definitely gives a fundamental floor for the stock, which, is, which should help lend some support around that 750 level. Um, revenue growth. So anytime you have high valuations, you always need to see that revenue growth is rationalizing that valuation. And here we definitely are seeing that. So year over year revenue growth is 39% or excuse me, 35%, which is well above the sector median. And then we have revenue growth for the next 12 months is 57%, which is well above the sector median at 8%. So growth metrics are 100% rationalizing the high valuation, which is beautiful to see. Anytime you lift the hood, of a growth stock you're always going to see poor valuations but you must you must 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 see high growth prospects because no one's ever going to pay up for a stock that isn't profitable unless they have you know high growth right so definitely rationalizing that there love to see it um and then when we look at profitability it honestly doesn't look great so gross profit margin is minus 25 percent and for those that don't know gross profit margin is basically just revenue minus cost of goods sold so to give an example let's say you're running a lemonade stand and you're you're selling lemonade for let's say a dollar 25 um and let's say you're you the cost to make that lemonade is about or excuse me let, let me change it up you're, you're selling you're selling lemonade for 75 cents and the cost to make that lemonade is a dollar. So you're losing money on every transaction. That 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 is basically what this gross profit margin tells you, right? Because it's cost of goods sold minus revenue. So um interesting there. Um pretty bad. <laughs> I, I won't sugarcoat that. That that kind of sucks. Um 
But then one thing here is we do have 80 cents of cash per share, which is about 10% of the market cap. So not horrible there, honestly. Um, so I think when you, when you look at the cash per share plus the price to book value, you add those two up, it, it definitely gives a fundamental floor for this stock. And then when we look at analyst re revisions, for those that don't know, analysts will change their EPS and revenue expectations based on company specific news, based on consumer news, based on you know general stock market news. So it's definitely a good re representation of how Wall Street is thinking about a stock. So let me look at this. We're seeing that there's been 12 EPS down revisions over the past three months and then 17 down revisions over the past three months for revenue. So definitely seeing that outweigh the up revisions. So obviously net net 13 down and then net net 11 down EPS revision. So Wall Street is becoming more and more bearish on the stock, which isn't great to see. Honestly, it's well, any metric or sp specific, um, you know, data point that you look at, can't look at it in a vacuum, right? You have to add it all up. But in this one data point is pretty poor. And it kind of shows that the general market is shifting towards Tesla when it comes to EV charging. And, you know, we, we might be seeing that here with analysts, um, you know, moving all their expectations down. So that looks pretty poor. Um, technicals don't look great. But with that being said, we have major support at $7.50. I think that's a great spot to add to your long-term position or initiate a position if you're so inclined. Um, so, but on, on the positive side, you know, price to book value looks beautiful. You know, 1.39 is kind of awesome. Um, and then you still do have 80 cents of cash per share. So the company's not going to be running out of money anytime soon a little less than 10% of the market cap. So not horrible there. I would say that those two metrics are kind of the <clears throat> saving grace. And obviously growth is rationalizing the valuation for the stock. So, you know, those are kind of the three positive takeaways. Um, so that is my breakdown on plug and I will end the video there. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis, so make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck, everyone. Happy trading. Happy investing.